Sega over the years have had a number of mascots before the likes of their now infamous Blue Blur, a character that was created at the right time, marketed at the right time, and despite being someone that arguably should have been left in the 90s, survived, refused to die, and is now one of the many reasons why Sega is still a thing amongst their other few surviving IPs. But before there was a Sonic, there was an Alex Kidd, and before that, there was an Oppa Oppa from Fantasy Zone. Possibly Wonder Boy for a short time, I don't know about that one. And if you're thinking about Professor Azobin and Dr. Games, they technically do not count, because they didn't make an appearance in a video game, but rather random characters placed on manuals to give the players tips on how to beat a challenging game. But there was one mascot that... <sighs> nah, this is stupid. Remember my old video on Flicky and how I proclaimed that she was a mascot? Do you find that ridiculous? Good! Because Flicky was not a mascot, she has never been a mascot either. But I do believe she's one of the most underrated characters who still exists for Sonic the Hedgehog. Unless she and her other animal pals were replaced with... Wisps. Because Sega still liked them for some reason. I mean, who actually likes the Wisps? Anyone? Didn't think so. To sum it up, I made a video I was proud of at the time, but I feel needs an update, a cleanup, and a bit of a spruce up to make it better, and to possibly remove the mascot hook. This is my remake of my old Flicky video, using some lines from the original, but now slightly edited and hopefully this will result in a much better video. Before we get to the arcade original, how did this blue bird come into fruition? Pac-Man, a game birthed at the time when space shooters were dominating the arcade. And with this yellow mancha, everything changed. It was a massive success that appealed to everyone. Men, women, children, everyone was satisfied with a good game of Pac-Man. This led to the rise of the maze genre in the early 80s. Sega, always looking to keep up the pace with everyone else, sought to make their own game that would appeal to the less hardcore audience. Flicky was created over the course of a year by Yoji Ishii of Fantasy Zone and Sonic Team fame and Yoshiki Kawazaki, the artist and lead designer of the game. Ishii and Kawazaki first joined Sega in the mid to late 70s. Ishii joined in 1978. His first assignment was to produce sound effects for Deep Scan and Zaxxon before getting the chance to design Up and Down from 1983, a game whilst obscure nowadays was successful enough for the time for Sega to allow him to create another title. Ishii was a man who wanted to make games that were considered bright and colourful, that they should be happy experiences for players. And if you see the gameplay of Flicky, then he accomplished that with flying colours. Ishii's boss wanted him to make a game that would near enough be a Pac-Man clone where you could collect dots in a maze from a top-down perspective. Something that was supposed to be better than Pac-Man, but would evolve into a game where it would be very similar to Namco's Mappy, a platform game where you collect items and bounce on trampolines. Though unlike Mappy, players would not be penalised for falling through floors, or in this case, falling through broken trampolines. Kawasaki, an artist who joined Sega in 1976, started out in the purchasing department before being moved to the visual design division of the company's research and development department after Hideki Sato, a man who worked for said department, recognised his talents. His first assignment was designing Golgo 13 for the SG-1000, a licensed game based off the popular and now long-running manga series starring an assassin. Kawasaki then worked on the cancelled Albagas and Sinbad Mystery before being assigned to be the lead designer of Flicky. This would be his chance to put his programming abilities to greater use, according to Kawasaki himself. The game changed over time, even if Kawasaki tried to make a game out of what little was planned. This was when Kawasaki got a little bit of inspiration from a 1970s Japanese variety show, Migoro Tabagoro Waraigoro. The song that inspired Kawasaki was called Densen Ondo, Three Sparrows on a Power Line, which features a man with three sparrows on a power line on his cape because Japan. Kawasaki pondered on why birds would move on electric lines when they could simply fly. This led to Flicky becoming a sparrow and jump being the main mechanic instead of fly. In terms of the baby birds Flicky has to save, they were originally just dots in a maze, which would simply disappear when they were collected. But Kawasaki tried to do something unique by making the dots line up behind Flicky. Trying to make the dots bigger was considered, but he couldn't do much with it, so he designed them to be baby birds. This would be the evolution of the Pio Pio, or chirps in the west, as well as adding a cat to hinder the player's progress, and trying to make the chirps harder to collect by making some of them wear sunglasses and scatter about. Kawasaki designed the game using a graphics tablet, 
as difficult as it was to use. This tablet would be made available to consumers as the TV Oikaki Tabureto in 1985. Being bored with the level design, which originally had lines on screen resembling power lines, his other inspiration came about by simply looking at the window and viewing an apartment building. And this is where he would design the game to be set in an apartment, which in turn allowed him to make random items that Flicky could use to fend off the cats. Oh, fun fact, Flicky was originally going to be called Busty. However, thanks to hindsight amongst the US, apparently Sega of America told the developers to change the name because the term Busty in the West was, and still is, used to describe women with huge titties. The game would be changed to Flippy, but there's two claims. Ishii said the game was changed from Flippy to Flicky due to issues regarding US trademark. But another claim said that it was changed because Flippy sounded too much like Mappy. Regarding Japanese law and stands from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I would believe in the latter. Well that should be it, and we can begin with the original game, released in 1984 for the Sega System 1 arcade hardware. Many prevalent games from Sega were released with this hardware, like Choplifter, My Hero, Teddy Boy Blues and Wonder Boy. The main objective of Flicky is to collect your friends the chirps. Yep, these are not your children, but your friends according to Kawasaki. Though he acknowledges that people assume she's a mother. But as I found out, Kawasaki was actually correct. I'll explain later. You can collect one or a few chirps and send them to the exit, or you can collect them all at once for bonus points. But you have trouble afoot, as house cats will start chasing you. These are known as the Nyanyans, but they're known as tigers in the west. There will also be an iguana later in a game called Choro, but is known as Iggy in the west. He's able to climb over platforms, so jump over him when possible. Tigers can be tricky sometimes, as if you have a long line of chirps, tigers touching them will disperse the chirps, meaning you'll have to find a way to get them back without being harmed by the tigers. But there is a way to temporarily defeat the tigers, as there'll be items scattered about you can collect and throw at them. Telephones, flower pots, cups, bottles, it doesn't matter. You can chuck them. Though the throw mechanic is put onto the jump button, so you either want to wait for an incoming enemy or throw it aside and move on. There'll be bonus levels every few levels or so. The goal is to catch as much chirps as you can using a net, and you can jump too though I didn't realise I could do that until much later. If you catch all of them, you get extra points and collecting enough points will grant you another life. The gameplay is as simple as it can be, but pretty hard to master. The game only gets more difficult much later in the game, and it's mostly from how levels are designed. There are straightforward levels that aren't too hard if you're not terrible at the game, but there are some really annoying levels that are either designed to be random in a way that doesn't work with the gameplay, trap you, or be a pain to go through. And it can also relate to controlling Flicky herself. You see, Flicky's momentum is insanely floaty to the point where she'll still move, even when you want her to stop, adding to the fact that she bounces off walls, which can be both a blessing and a curse, depending on the level. Round 42 is an example of how annoying it can get, as I'm just slipping, sliding and failing to get out. I mean, eventually I do, but it took 6 minutes to do so. Then there's levels where the pitch you can drop down through is so small, and Flicky is so floaty that she can just hover over it. Though this is a rare occasion, it pretty much wants you to always be as precise as possible if you want the high score. Want another way to spike the difficulty? The chirps themselves, since there are two types. There are normal ones who will walk about a bit or stay there until they wait for you if they ever disperse. And then there's chirps wearing sunglasses who think they're hot stuff and scatter everywhere, making it harder for you to dodge the tigers and such. How many levels does this game have? 47, and the game loops from the first level onwards, getting harder over time. So we have another looping game, a common element to some arcade games at the time. The Donkey Kong arcade titles are another example of this. Despite some of the issues shown, it's still a fun title, I get invested in its fun gameplay and there's a huge incentive to collect all the chirps at once, since you gain tons of points. The game has a theme of wanting to protect children, a narrative, as Kawasaki puts it, of players having the maternal instinct of protecting defenseless children from predators, an adult wanting to keep children safe from the dangers of the unknown in the eyes of a child. I only just realised, in my lack of common sense, that the chirps are baby chickens, and despite Flicky being a mere sparrow, she still wants to protect them, to keep them safe, like a temporary mother. It's a simple concept, but successfully hits the adorableness in a manner that not even its inspirations could reach for. In the same way you want to protect Pikmin from danger for example, Flicky wants to protect the chirps from the cats and the lizard. So that's it for the arcade original, but of course it received ports, starting with the SG-1000 port 
and it's absolutely infuriating as Flicky is more floaty, trying to jump on platforms are annoying and jumping from one platform to another is so precise, you need to be at the very edge to even get to another platform. Add to the fact that the tigers are more ruthless in this one, the first level was near impossible to get through. Okay, I did, but I'm sure it was based on luck. Next was the MSX port, which is the same as the SG-1000 port due to similar hardware, but it's a bit quicker this time round. It's still annoying to play, so nothing much has changed. It was also released on the Sharp X1, Sharp MZ, Fujitsu FM7, NEC PC A001 and PC A801. So it had its time with Japanese home computers, but Sega never bothered to port the game to Western home computers. I feel it could have worked for the likes of a ZX Spectrum or other home computers popular in the UK and other parts of Europe. Or maybe the game wasn't as popular in the West, too cutesy I guess. Well that would be ridiculous because it was released on the Sega Mega Drive in the US and Europe. Now this one is quite special to me since this was the port I played as a child thanks to the plug and play Mega Drive. So with that in mind I could comfortably go back to this one. Needless to say it's near arcade perfect. The graphics look the same, though the music sounds tinny and more annoying now that I hear it again. So if you can't access the arcade original for whatever reason then the Mega Drive version is still the best port. Or the only port that can equal the arcade original slightly, similar to Columns. It was also released on the Sega Mega CD in Japan only via Game No Kandame Volume 1, a compilation of games. Since the game didn't come out for the Sega Mega Drive in Japan physically, but was released via Sega Mega Net, a modem that let you download games via phone line, meaning that games had to be small and no, it didn't last very long, but was one of the predecessors to the online gaming services of today. The Mega CD port has CD quality music, other than that it's the Mega Drive port. Oh, and there was another Mega CD compilation, the Wonder Mega Collection, a sample disc bundled with Japanese Wonder Mega consoles, and Flicky was also included in the disc. But that's not the end of Flicky just yet, as she had a number of cameos and other random appearances. From Teddy Boy Blues in a bonus game, to Block Seed, another version of Tetris where she's a power up that lets you shoot blocks, SDI is an interesting one where you'll see her when you shoot everything and get a perfect and if you use a cheat code or activate it via MAME she'll be playable. Well you'll find out she's inside the spacecraft once you get hit. She's in Flashpoint, another Tetris game and Super Monaco GP where you see her on the racetrack banner and the game over screen. Eventually, she'd appear in the majority of the Sonic games from here on out. In fact, she's more known for being in the Sonic series than her own game. Whether that's a good or bad thing is up to you. References to her from other games include a poster for advertising her original game in Shin Miu and a level in Gunstar Superheroes, including a tribute to her original game. But what if I told you that the original Flicky game did in fact get a spiritual sequel of sorts? And what is this spiritual sequel you may ask? Yep, Sonic 3D Flicky's Island is technically a spiritual sequel to Flicky. Don't believe me? Well, I'll show you. You go around destroying enemies and out pop out Flicky birds. Now notice how these birds follow Sonic in a single line, wherever direction he goes. Just like how the chirps follow Flicky. When a Flicky bird gets hit, it separates itself from the group, similar to how the chirps in the original game separate themselves when tigers touch them. And when Sonic dies, the Flicky birds scatter, just like when Flicky gets hit, the chirps scatter, especially when you respawn. So yeah, that was something interesting. It's just a shame that Sonic 3D, in my opinion, isn't a good game. I'd recommend the director's cut hack. And that should be it for Flicky, a small legacy for a small bird and the only obscure character from the world of Sega that still lived on in appearances in one way or another. But let's have a go at make-believe regarding the mascot hook. What would make Flicky a decent mascot now? Well, she's blue to represent the company's logo colour, she has a design that is fundamentally simple and can be appealing universally, a bird taking care of baby chicks in the same way Sonic takes care of the animal's well-being. As for Flicky as a character, well, she has no personality. She's a bird. It doesn't make sense regarding the anthropomorphic animals in the Sonic series, but whatever. If you ever think of that Flicky Bird you had to rescue from a mechanical contraption, also think of her as the old mentor, watching over a legend. Your opinions on that will depend on how much you like Sonic in general. <laughs>